You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us
couldn't do long I feel the rain crashing down All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found But you don't care, yeah I'm aware Keep moving like the scars aren't even there It's in the air like a blazing flare Shadows in the atmosphere, charting the stratosphere. I prayed for you and kept you near, and hopes you chase away my fears. I'm on my own, you made it so. Points in blaming you, you did not know oh. I thought you were the one for me That's why I give you everything How would you cross by the song you see So you meant the world to me
kept spitting at my feet and forced me down a dead end street when all I had went up in flames, burning only dark remains. I cover up every part of my skin, oh, cause I don't like the person within, no, oh, I know I'm the one to blame, all I can do is take the shame, oh. Say goodbye, refuse to question why I, I, I'm too sad to say I'm sorry, so lie And pretend that you're okay, swear that you will stay Keep trying for one day Hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I wanna run off, I am flying And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home Oh, oh, oh I hate all this old Thinking, oh, 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 the more I swim, the more I'm singing. Take me to a world of silver, no more heartbreaks, tears, painkillers. Take me somewhere unfamiliar, bring me back to where we started.
Okay, everyone, I'm about to begin now. All right, so I apologize for the, la the late start and I do hope that it's not going to create too much of a havoc for most persons. Um, but it is good to have you here. If you have not yet done so, I'm going to ask that you please indicate your name in the chat so that we know that you have tuned in. And I'm going to... I have a message pinned that has the link to the document I want for you guys to download that will help you to answer any questions that you might have. Um, download the link, at least the link that we have. So hopefully that is helpful to you. All right, so shall we, shall we begin? The topic for tonight is the seven keys to getting and staying well. And the important thing about it is that it gives me the opportunity each week or each month to be able to share with our um, patient population important information about health. And it is my hope that as you go through and you listen to what we're going to share about today, that you will come away with some information that's going to really be very helpful to you. Um, if you're having any trouble hearing me, please indicate so that I can know. If you're hearing me fine, please let me know. Um, and I'll wait for that confirmation before I begin um, the lecture proper. So if you can hear me fine, please just let me know. If I'm too low, if I'm too loud, um, let me know as well. So if I sound pretty clear to you, um, that would be, that'd be great. All right, so I'm not getting any confirmations at this point. Let me just type it in here. If you can't hear me, please indicate. Just waiting for a confirmation here. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Whew. All right, so let us begin, shall we? Thanks, Abion. Thank you, Lisa. All right, so the topic for today's um, class and if you have not yet done so I'm going to ask that you go ahead and click the subscribe button so I look forward to chatting <laughs> with you all soon great all right, so and click the notification bell icon as well because um, that way you'll be notified whenever we go live. So the topic for this evening, seven keys to getting and staying well. Um, a few things. I've given you the link to the handout. Hi, Newton. Welcome, welcome. I've given you the link to the handout and the handout should allow you to be able to fill in the blank if you're able to download it, especially if you're on your laptops. Um, I'm not sure how it will work on your phones. 
but at least it should be a fill in the blanker. Either way, you will have the information somewhat as a, as a guide as we go through the presentation. So the topic, seven keys to getting and staying well. Now, this is what the handout looks like. So if you haven't yet done so, you can actually just take a screenshot of this if you're able to, um, or just download the link. I think that link is, is, is a better option. So there are seven keys that we're gonna be discussing. The first key, and as we go through them, if you have any questions or any concerns, please post them in the chat. I'll go through and try my best to answer those questions. If you have anything you'd like to support or to suggest, you may also post it in the chat section as well. I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible so that it doesn't go beyond um, too much over seven. It might go a little bit over seven, but we'll see how it goes. We'll try our best, right? Without rushing. Um, so key number one is sick care versus health care. And when we talk about the health care system, most people, I don't think most people use the health care system in a way that it was primarily designed. The healthcare system has two primary functions. One is to ease lives, to save lives, and the other one is to ease suffering. And so you find that if, if you are a person who, let's say you're in an automobile accident and you, your life is in danger or you're in danger of losing your life, the system that you need to plug into and plug into it right away as early as possible is the healthcare system because its focus is to save lives. So there are emergency procedures and emergency interventions that can be brought to bear to try to save your life. So there isn't another system or a way that you should go if it is of a crisis nature. The other one is to ease suffering. So, so let's say for argument's sake, you are having physical suffering. Let's say you fractured a bone or you severed an arm, or you had um, some mental anguish and you have psychological trauma, which is causing you to suffer, then the best thing to do is to plug into that medical system, that healthcare system, because that's what it is designed primarily to be able to do, and not just do, do better than everyone else. And that's without question, and that's something that I fully agree with. But what the system is not designed to do, it is not designed to make you, um, it's not designed to make a reasonably healthy person optimally healthy. It's not designed to do that. And so because persons don't even understand the significance of that, a lot of persons who want to just to get the best out of life, they they're not really suffering with any illness. They just want to make sure that as they get older, they stay healthy. And they use as their primary tool this system. The downside to that is that what the system can, the only thing the system can do for you is what we call early detection. So they can offer blood tests and diagnostics like ultrasounds or MRIs or mammograms or whatever other diagnostic tests to try to catch a disease early in the process. But it is not designed to optimize your health. And why do I say that? We all know that the primary ways that we optimize our health is through our nutrition, what we eat, and through our movements, how we exercise. And both those areas are unfortunately, for whatever reason, grossly lacking in the standard training for um, the medical, the standard medical doctor. They are not trained adequately in nutrition and so they can't guide you to make nutritional recommendations to optimize your health. As far as it comes, as it goes to, refers to nutrition, recommendations can be made nutritionally, but it, it is as it relates to a disease, not as it relates to optimizing health. And so it's important to understand, right? And so the first key is this system we call the sick care system. Well, the healthcare system. The reason I call it the sick care system is because 
it primarily caters to the sick. And as a virtue of how this system operates, the other thing about the system is that this system has to, by nature, be a reactive system. And what do I mean by reactive? We mean that something has to go wrong first, and then the system can kick into gear to try to intervene. It doesn't work well unless something has gone wrong first. All right, the next thing is, as we look at this sick care system, which is reactive, if you want to have a chance of being truly healthy or optimizing your health and vitality, you cannot simply wait until something has gone wrong first. You have to make choices or changes in your life before things go wrong so that you can optimize your health. And this is being proactive. Proactive is necessary if you want to, be, to have a chance of being healthy. Now, the unfortunate downside of the system as, we, as it relates to how we focus is that the majority reason that person or the main reason that persons even go to a hospital in the first place is not even for trauma. Yes, trauma is important and trauma does happen quite a bit, but the main cause for persons to be hospitalized are, or causes are non-communicable diseases, that is lifestyle diseases, like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, um, strokes. These are all lifestyle diseases that based on how we live and the choices that we, we make in our lives as to what we eat, how much we move and all these things, based on these things, we can either increase the probability of being a participant in the healthcare system by way of needing to be hospitalized, or we can prevent ourselves from even entering into that system at all by being optimally healthy. And my recommendation to all of us is we need to find a way to be optimally healthy. And so drugs and surgery cannot solve a lifestyle problem. The only solution to a lifestyle problem is a change in our lifestyles, full stop, period. That is it. And to change our lifestyle, we have to change our behavior. And to change our behavior, we have to change the way we think. And most people don't understand that you don't create change in an individual by a series of actions. You do not. You create changes by virtue of how how um, how well you're able to change the way you think about life or the way you think about um, different experiences. And so that is important, all right? So change the way you live, change the way you think, and you will be able to change the way you live. So according to the illness care model, the way that the main person would think or we are trained to think is that if something has gone wrong, we need to take something from externals, from outside, in order to feel better. And taking something to feel better is a problem because feeling better can occur without actually getting better. And there are many drugs on the market in particular that are so wonderful that they can short circuit the way your normal physiology works and make you feel like you're normal despite the fact that you may have a condition or a situation that's causing you to have a disease. For example, you can have a problem in your body that's causing you to be hypertensive, which is having high blood pressure. And so you go to your doctor, they give you a blood pressure lowering medication, which lowers your blood pressure, but it doesn't fix the cause of your blood pressure being elevated. Now, yes, it is true that blood pressure being elevated has its own consequences, but there's also a cause to your blood pressure being elevated. And if you ignore the cause and simply treat the effect, then over time, the medication will eventually stop working. And the question is, have you really done that person a, a, a service or have you done them a disservice by lowering their blood pressure artificially without addressing the underlying cause. And there are many causes for blood pressure to be elevated. And the, probably the least 
likely cause is having too much salt in your diet. You see, if you if you drink enough water, you don't have to worry about salt per se. And I mean within reason, right? You don't want to go crazy. But if you have a little bit too much salt in your diet, you drink more water, what happens is that there's a mechanism in your body via your kidneys that allow you to excrete excess salt. And so, if you have excess salt in your bloodstream, that can be eliminated very easily as long as your kidneys are working properly. So salt is almost never the real reason. But unfortunately, that's the solution that most people hear. If you have high blood pressure, lay off the salt. But let me tell you something. Salt contains minerals. Minerals are necessary ingredients for your health. And so, unfortunately, we don't suck on stones, we don't eat stones, we don't eat dirt. And so, if we don't have enough minerals from the plant, plant-based foods that we're eating, we need salt in our diet in order to have the electrolytes and the minerals necessary for normal function to occur. Did you even know this? If you know this, please indicate, because I'd like to know who knew these things, right? And we don't hear them often enough. And, and because we don't appreciate or understand what it takes to be healthy, we make bad choices. So simply saying, I want to feel better is not enough. We want to ask, what do I need to do in order to get better? That's a much better position to be in. The next thing is getting well. People treat wellness as if it's a destination. So they say, I want to be well. I want to, I want to get well. Wellness is not a destination. It's not something to ad arrive at. What do I mean? Wellness is more of a journey. It's a process or a process by which one attains vitality. Vitality is optimal health, right? But it's a process. Wellness is a process. When you think about illness, illness is a tendency toward death and disease, whereas wellness is a ten tendency to go toward optimal health and vitality. So wellness is a journey. It is not the destination. The destination is vitality or optimal health. But to achieve optimal health, you need to be exercising or living in accordance with a wellness lifestyle, right? And what is a wellness lifestyle? A wellness lifestyle is one that is proactive, meaning that you do the things necessary to prevent yourselves from breaking down or getting sick in the first place. That is important. So when you see people saying they want to get well, and that's their min mindset, um, you know, you might have even sent them a letter or, or a card in the hospital, somebody's sick, and you send them a get well soon card. To say to somebody, get well, or for somebody to get those get well soon cards, it's just a wish, it's just a hope. It is not an actual, there's no effort behind it, there's no action behind it, it is just a hope or a wish. What's more important than simply wanting to get well is wanting to stay well. And if you say, what do I need to do in order to stay well, then your mind shift would have occurred. Because automatically you will realize that wellness is not a one-time thing, it's not a short-term thing. It is a lifestyle pattern. It's a habit that you have to stick to in order to sustain. And so wanting to stay well is where our mindsets need to be. We know that there are many old people living today. And, you know, unfortunately, the healthcare system has gotten to a point where it can keep people animated even though their quality of life is extremely poor. You have people who can be on ventilators, um, they can be in ICU, unresponsive, for weeks, even months, and they will stay in that condition unless or until the doctors pull the plug. What kind of living is that? I certainly wouldn't want to live that way. Um, maybe some of you might want to live that way. I certainly don't want to live that way. And so as it pertains to how to live, I think it's more important to have the, the 
where you live be more critical to how long you live. And so for me, feeling alive is way more important than just, than just simply being alive. So rather than simply saying, I want to stay alive, how about what do I need to do in order to feel alive? Because it is the quality of, of, of your life that, that matters. And I often tell people, I, I may know quantum about it, I'm a married man, right? And for me, I want to be able to experience all the things in my old age that I can currently experience in my younger age now. Um, so I've made some drastic changes in my life um, several years ago, but even more so last year. Um, because I recognize that I am getting older, and if I don't make these changes, then by the time I wait until I already have a disease, it might be a little bit too late. And so rather than waiting until I have a disease, I've decided to make changes in my life. So what are these changes I've made? I exercise regularly. And when I say exercise, I have a structured exercise plan because I don't have enough time in my day to do enough moving. You see, people think exercise is like walk for half an hour or walk for 40 minutes five days a week and, and, and that's good, right? That, that, that might be good for cardiovascular health to some degree, but you do realize that walking is hard on your joints. Walking is very hard on your joints, and especially if you have to walk on hilly terrain. So if you have to walk on hilly terrain, you can end up damaging your joints, your knees, your ankles, your hips. And especially as an older person, walking can be pretty pretty treacherous. So much so that there are people who fall, trip and fall while walking for exercise. And I've had a few of those people come into my office. Or people who have been hit down by cars while they're exercising on the road. I know people who have been knocked down and killed while riding their bicycle as a part of their exercise on the road. So don't think that the end all and be all is, is, is just doing um, some physical activity, any particular physical activity, right? But being physical and moving is critical to optimal health. So you have to make sure you understand that health is not just about your heart health. It's also about your emotional health. It's also about your bone health. Here's something that's important to know. If you do weight-bearing exercises, meaning that you are opposing gravity with what you're doing, such as walking to some degree, that can be good for bone strength. But walking puts a lot of strain on the knees, hips, and ankles because when you walk, up to three times your body weight is placed on each foot at heel strike, sometimes even more. If you run, it's even more than that. If you jump, it's even more than that. And so you have to understand that there are consequences to everything. So everything in moderation. And it's good to use somebody who is trained to guide you well so as to ensure you don't hurt yourself. All right? And unfortunately, most of our medical providers, probably including myself, probably if I weren't an athlete um, and had the history that I had personally, I might not even have been able to guide you well. Right? Um, but... Apart from that, most of us in healthcare, we're not trained adequately to guide people well. Unless we do further studies, and a lot of people actually do further studies and are well adept to make that recommendation. Whether it's a chiropractor or a medical doctor, there are many people who are able to make that recommendation. Um, so the trick is to find the person, find them, right? So if you look carefully at the chart behind me here, Instead of simply looking at the illness way of thinking, we want to think according to the wellness way. So not feel, get, stay, but it's a subtle shift to get, stay, feel. Get better, not just wanting to feel better. Stay well, not just saying I want to get well. And feeling alive, more important than simply wanting to stay alive. And that, my dear friends, is key. From this point, we're going to move a lot faster now because I want people to kind of see where we are at and understand what we're talking about. The second key is the truth about pain. 
The question is, is pain a good thing or a bad thing? Is pain a good thing or a bad thing? And please feel free to answer. Is pain a good thing or a bad thing? And while we do the Jeopardy um, sound, -na 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 -na, I'll spare you the rest. Is pain a good thing or a bad thing? Please write your answers in the chat. Is pain a good thing or a bad thing? Is pain a good thing? So Abion says good. I think I think she's trying to anticipate what I am going to think, you know. Anyone else? Is pain a good thing or a bad thing? Well, the bottom line is whether we perceive pain to be a good thing or not, there is a purpose to pain. There is a purpose to pain, and that purpose is very important. And as you probably all already know, pain alerts us that something has changed, something has gone wrong and needs our attention. That is the thing about pain. That's very important. The problem is that we can't use pain to let us know all the time when something has gone wrong. Because pain by itself has limitations one of these limitations is it doesn't always tell you when something is wrong. And that is so very important to recognize. It doesn't always tell you when something has gone wrong. And so you can have a disease like cancer heart disease, diabetes, and not have any pain in the early stages, hypertension, not have any pain. And if you're waiting for pain to tell you that you need to change your life or you need to go to the doctor, you're going to be in trouble. Because pain doesn't always warn you. And that's important to note. Pain does not always warn you. So you cannot trust pain. You cannot trust pain. Now, wherever you see the bolded items, and I may have failed to say, these bolded, I bolded items, I, the pain, will fall into one of those fill in the blankers. So for this one, for example, you look under key number two, the truth about pain, and where you see pain alerts us, this whole sentence should be there, is that pain alerts us that something has changed and requires our attention. So wherever you see a bolded item, that is what you will use as a fill in the blanker. So simply saying that you feel good does not mean you're healthy. Feeling good does not mean you're healthy. Too many people, when you ask them, so how's your health? They will answer, it's pretty good, you know. I was like, really? How do you know that it's pretty good? Well, I'm feeling great. All right. How about taking that a step further? Because feeling great, I, I know a lot of people who feel great today and they fall dead tomorrow of a heart attack, all right? So feeling great doesn't mean you're healthy. Um, how about examining, are you doing the things necessary to promote a healthy body? And these things include the things that you put in your mouth. There's a saying that says people are using their teeth to dig their graves. Meaning that they are eating themselves to death. So what put they put into their mouths is driving them closer to the grave rather than optimizing their health. So there's no secret to this. And if your goal is simply just weight loss or your goal is simply just to, you know, look good for the summer, then you might not have the motivation to do the things necessary to even achieve that. 
so you might end up taking drugs or different things to kind of you know fat burners and different things to try to lose weight or you might get the cosmetic bodies because you want to look good um, but there are things that we can do to improve our overall um, health in a way that is not just safe and natural but very effective and that is to what we eat a plant-based diet there are people who believe still to this day and there are nutritionists who teach that eating a diet that has a little bit of everything meaning deprive yourselves of nothing eat only animal produce or eat animal produce as well as vegetables and as well as fruits just have a little bit of every kind of foods is the best way to go i have seen people who eat a lot of meats i have seen people who eat a fairly balanced diet meaning that they eat a little bit of everything a little meat a little vegetables and i've seen people who eat primarily plant-based foods and I can tell you categorically, there's a significant difference in the health profile for those who eat primarily a plant-based diet from those who eat a little bit of everything. If you have documentation to prove or, or um, research to prove otherwise, please let me know. I'd gladly review it because I, I'm, I'm no... I don't defend any position I have unless I already researched it and know it to be true. So I don't stand by any decision or any position I have. I am open to learning from information that is valid. And so if you have sources to tell me otherwise, please share it with me because I'd love to review it so I can see whether I need to change this part of my presentation. And I'm welcome, I'm open to doing that. You know, if you want to have good health, you have to ensure that your body is working properly. And even if you don't have an opportunity to measure it, you do know what you put into your bodies. And the things you put into your bodies have a direct impact on how your body functions. So if you want to have a healthy function, you have to eat healthily. And eating healthy means not just eating plant-based foods, but a wide variety. A wide variety. When you look at your plate, your plate should look like a rainbow of colors. It should have a little purple, a little red, a little blue, a little orange, a little green. Yeah, a little white. And white is not very common in nature. But like the inside of a horseradish, hmm is white right you have onions that are kind of white in look so you know that's what i mean right um certainly not white flour refined grains are actually very bad for us so people who eat a lot of cornmeal people who eat a lot of um white flour and they think okay i don't want to eat white flour because the flour is not good so i'll eat cornmeal flour dumpling because the cornmeal is better for me. The cornmeal might absorb slower and so may cause less of a blood sugar spike, but that's only looking at it from a blood sugar perspective. The cornmeal now is also a refined grain and refined grains can cause problems. It is much better to have a whole grain food. So, um, Oats, like raw oats, are very good. In fact, uh, most mornings in my breakfast, it, it includes raw oats, raisins, um, a little vegetarian protein powder. I have almond seeds, pine seeds, um, or pine nuts, rather. Um, I have pumpkin seeds. I have, um, what's that seed called? um flat seed as a part of my breakfast how do i have all these things well i have a blender 
I take two tablespoons of each of those seeds, put them in my blender, put my oats in there, my raisins in there, some little coconuts in there, um, put a banana in there, put my protein powder in there, and I blend that sucker up with some almond milk. And let me tell you, delicious. And it's very filling. You can do enough to hold you for several hours. And then you have a wonderful lunch after that. Um, I prefer like wild rice rather than um, even brown rice. But brown rice is not so bad as long as it's not rice that's just colored brown, but it's real raw, um, you know, brown rice that is wild rice. Um, so all these things can be done and can be done fairly well and fairly easily. It just takes some discipline um, and some know-how because if you don't, if you're not used to it, you won't know how to organize your meals in a way that is easy to follow and easy to maintain. All right. So we, we say all of that. Oh, and by the way, I love fruits and that's, if I have to snack on anything, I snack on fruits. I drink a lot of water. You know, these things are important. Great for your skin. I mean, I can always say that I look young, right? Um, but the reality is, I mean, I do look young. I, I, I think I look younger than I, my actual age, right? But there are many people who eat poorly and still look young, right? So maybe my look, looking young might be a genetic thing because my parents also look fairly young. Um, and they're 70 this year. Um, so, you know, go figure, right? But if you do the right things, your quality of life will be very different, I guarantee you. So that's what we want to do, all right? Trust how our bodies are working, not just how it feels. So stop relying on how you feel to determine what you do. Do the things to guarantee how you will feel. So rather than trying to simply use your feelings to determine what you do in life, you do the things required to guarantee a particular feeling. That's way more important, all right? There are several systems of the body, of our human body. And if we look at them, there's the immune system, digestive system, cardiovascular, integumentary, which is our skin and different coverings, respiratory system, endocrine, reproductive, excretory, musculoskeletal, and the nervous system. These are all the systems of the body, the human body. And when we look at these systems, it is important to recognize that they work together to help us to achieve good health. And if we do not, if we fail to harmonize how each of our systems work, we're going to be in trouble. Many people use even vitamins and minerals in a way that is unhealthy, that creates imbalance rather than balance. So when we look at it, check, just listen to what I have to say here really quickly, right? Um, asking yourself, let's say for argument's sake, you recognize that your vision is poor. And you say, okay, my vision is poor. What nutrients do I know are good for eyesight? And then you take the next few weeks or months increasing your carrot intake, trying to eat a lot of carrots, um, trying to eat a lot of things that have in beta carotene, so anything that has those bright colors, especially bright orange, bright red. Most of these vegetables that have these bright colors typically have a lot of beta carotene. That is actually good for vision, but using a symptom treatment approach to how you eat is not the best approach. What you need to do is look at your diet and determine having looked at your whole diet, like you take a, what we call a seven day food diary and you make a list of everything that goes into your body via your mouth um, for the seven days. And then you categorize them. You can even put them in Google and find out what are the constituents of it. 
and you can see if there are things that you're getting a lot of and things that you're not getting enough of. And if you're not getting enough of something, then you want to look for foods to bring up those things that you're not getting enough of. For a lot of people, they don't get enough vitamin E. And vitamin E is not very common and very easy to find. For most persons, they're going to be vitamin D deficient. Why are most people vitamin D deficient? Most people are vitamin D deficient because they're not spending any time in the sun, for one. And two, there are no good animal sources or plant sources of vitamin D. None. If you want to have enough vitamin D to be healthy, to have optimal levels of vitamin D in your bloodstream, then you need to supplement vitamin D or you need sunlight to get that vitamin D. And the reason we do not have animals or plants giving us a lot of vitamin D is because that's not how God intended it or if you are more comfortable with the idea of nature intended for your vitamin D to get into your system. God intended the, the vitamin D to get in via sunlight. Sunlight converts cholesterol in our skin into vitamin D in our blood. And when I say cholesterol in our skin, I do mean cholesterol. And so all you people who are on cholesterol-lowering medications, what you're in effect doing is destroying your ability to make vitamin D from sunlight. And so if you're on cholesterol-lowering medications, there are two things I'm going to suggest that you need as a must. One is coenzyme Q10. And you need to be taking between 200 to 400 milligrams of CoQ10 every day, especially if you're on any cholesterol-lowering medication, because the medications will not only lower your cholesterol levels, but lower the ability of your bodies to make CoQ10. And CoQ10 is essential for all muscles to do the job of energy, which means since the heart is a muscle, your heart will not have enough energy to do the work it needs to do, and your heart can go bye-bye if you're on cholesterol-lowering med cholesterol -lowering medication without proper supplementation of some of, these, some of these things. So if your doctor has never said it to you, I am saying it to you now. If you're on cholesterol-lowering medications, you need to be on at least 200 to 400 milligrams of vitamin of, of CoQ10. It's CO capital Q dash 10, CoQ10, or another name for it is coenzyme Q10, or another way that you will see the precursor of CoQ10 um, appearing as a nutrient is ubiquinol, ubiquinol, U-B-I-Q-U-I-N-O-L, ubiquinol. I think that's correct. All right, so that's that. But not only CoQ10, but vitamin D as well, because of the whole the necessity of, of your cholesterol to make vitamin D. You take cholesterol lower medication, it destroys your liver, your liver can't make enough cholesterol, and then as a consequence, you end up not being able to make the vitamin D. And vitamin D is necessary for many different functions of the body. And almost every single disease that you think of that you will say black people or people of African descent, I want to say African, I mean people who kind of look like me, right? Um, will have more so than people of European descent or Aryan descent. The, the, one of the things that you will see there is that these persons um, are vitamin D deficient. And so any of those things that one will say is predominantly in the black population and not in the other populations or people of color, but not in the others, has a lot to do with vitamin D. And almost every single one of those conditions can be a symptom of vitamin D deficiency. Almost every single one. Diabetes, depression, hypertension, they are all symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. Most people don't even know that. So God in his wisdom, and I may no apologize here, I apologize for some who are upset, upset but just for being upset, but I don't apologize for saying this. Um, God in his wisdom gave us sunlight for our health. And it's such a huge part of our health 
that if you lock somebody away from sunlight for long enough, they are going to become sick and diseased. And this is why places like the northern European countries that will have extended winters, winter time when they may have only two hours of, of sunlight for the entire day, they don't get enough sunlight to make vitamin D during their winter time. And so that leads to vitamin D deficiency, which can lead to disease. One of the most common diseases is respiratory tract infections. So what most of these countries do, they make it mandatory or they make a recommendation that the foods are supplemented with vitamin D. So they put vitamin D in foods. So you can either buy it as a supplement separately or buy it in a food that is fortified <clears throat> with vitamin D. All right, so there you have it. Now, of all these systems of the body, I want to point out something very important, that the nervous system is the major system of the body. The nervous system is the system that's very different from all these other systems because even though every single other one of these systems coordinates with each other, interact with each other, may influence the the effective function of the other ones it is the nervous system that directs directs the function of each of these other systems and if your nervous system is not working properly then every single one of these other systems can be impacted in a comprehensive way so let's talk about this real quickly right the, ner the nervous system is a mass control system of the body. One of the important things about the nervous system, and I'm going to try to see if I can show you here. Um, one of the things is... Hmm, hold on. Yes. One of the things that's very important in the whole looking at the nervous system and its role is its impact on the organs themselves. And if you look here, you see the brain at the top here, which is a major organ of the, the nervous system, and the spinal cord. And I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit closer so you can kind of see what we're talking about. But from the brain and spinal cord, if you notice that there are these yellow things that go to each of the organs, as well as these blue things that go to each of these organs, these yellow things and blue things are called nerves. These are nerves. And as you look at the nerves, the way they work is that they control how these organs function. Now, a nerve will not tell an organ to start or stop working because organs, they have to all work all the time in order for us to have good function or the body to be alive. Organs don't have the option to just stop. But what they do is they either increase in their rate of function or they decrease in their rate of function. So, for example, your heart beat your heart will beat constantly. It never, ever stops while you're alive, of course. Right? Your heart never, ever stops. It beats constantly. But when you're nervous or ex excited or worried or somebody's attacking you, you, your heart rate will increase. So it will speed up the rate at which it beats. Um, if it is, and I'll just kind of bring them to the heart here so you can see the heart. Right? This is the heart. These are the nerves that travel from the spine that speeds up the heart. These are the ones that travel from the brain stem that slows down the heart. So if it is that you're relaxed at home in bed at night about to go to sleep, the blue ones in this diagram will turn on more to reduce the rate of your heart, reduce the rate of your breathing, and so your heart rate and your breathing will calm down in that circumstance. If you have a problem in your spine that affects the function of these yellow nerves here, which would normally speed up your heart, what you may find happening is that your heart rate may pick up when it's not appropriate for it to do so. And if that happens, 
then you can end up with different types of problems. All right, so that is very, very important. So the nervous system is a master control system of the body. Spinal misalignments cause vertebral subluxations to occur. And why is that? And that's because a misalignment of the spine, which is what a subluxation is, can interfere with the nerves that have to pass through. And some of these nerves will go to organs like your heart, lungs, stomach, and your digestive system, excretory system. So that is important. All right, this shows you an example of what that may look like. And this third bone that you see here is misaligned compared to the others above it and below it. The opening at the back where the nerves would normally come through, like this yellow nerve here would normally come through. If you push the bone out of place, you close off that opening, it may interfere with the nerve as it comes through. And as it interferes with that nerve, you will find that the function that that nerve carries will be impaired as well. Imagine what will happen if this is supposed to control the airways for a child. Then you may end up with a child with asthma. What if it controls the heart rate of a child? Then you may end up with somebody or the child with what's called tachycardia or rapid heartbeats or heart palpitations, which I have seen and corrected their spine and these problems go away. You see, the body is beautifully designed and there are layers of responsibility. It is not true to say that every problem with the body can be tracked or traced back to the spine. But because we know that the spine is involved with so many different functions of the body, if we have a function of the body that is off or multiple functions of the body that is off and we can't quite put our finger on what the cause is likely to be, isn't it prudent to at least consider investigating the spinal possibility because that is that is an important thing the spine can be a very important or have a very important role as it pertains to just maintaining one's overall health this is where a chiropractor comes in because the only profession that is trained trained um to realign those bones specifically is the chiropractor there there's the um i believe the osteopath as well that is similarly trained their focus while doing so might be a little different but these are the only professionals that are properly trained properly trained to handle the rigors of realigning the spine safely so i would not go to a, a, a certainly um, any other provider who has done only like a weekend course or a three-month course to be to entrust to them something so important, right? I'll go to somebody who is properly trained. And this is why I advocate for people to see a chiropractor about the spine and about whether the issue that you're having could be related to the spine. Because if we can correct the spine, if it is the cause, then your problem will just go away on its own. And some people say it's miraculous, right? I'm just going to move forward a little bit um, because we have technology that we have invested in to help us to identify subluxations wherever and whenever they occur in our bodies. These, this technology is called the Insight Subluxation Station. The Insight Subluxation Station. And it is certified by the Space Foundation and measures the function of your spine and identifies wherever these spinal misalignments are or vertebral subluxations are. And there are two ways primarily that we measure this in our bodies, in our office. The first way is by using what's called a rolling thermal scanner, which measures the skin temperature of the spine. And the other way is a surface electromyography, surface EMG, which measures muscle activity in the spine. Very important. A chiropractor, so, so that you understand, right? A chiropractor is like a family doctor. 
The work that we do impacts the brain, and this is one particular study that shows that. Beautiful study. Woman was asked to wiggle her left ankle, and on the left, it showed her brain before an adjustment and her brain after an adjustment on the right. And what we do find... What we do find when we look at it is before the adjustment, you have lights all over the place in the brain. After the adjustment, fewer areas of lights appear. And the areas of light will represent areas where the brain had to be active to do the role. And to wiggle your left ankle should only require a small portion of the right-hand side of the brain to activate, which is what we see here in the same person after the adjustment. As if to say that the adjustment has improved the way the brain and the body communicate with each other, which is one way that we theorize um, the adjustment to improve the function of the person. So that is, that is important. Chiropractors are not bone doctors. We're nervous system doctors because the work that we do impacts the nervous system much more than it will impact the bones. So bear that in mind, people. All right? Now, a chiropractor that I indicate is like a family doctor. All chiropractors are trained to realign the spine, in essence, right, in some way. And there are many different techniques in order to do so. Some use a hands-on approach. Some use an energy approach. But they, these all make a difference. I'm a chiropractic neurologist, and so I am, I am equipped to retrain the brain itself using specific exercises to improve certain types of functions based on what is wrong with the person. Now, we don't fix every brain problem, but some can be fixed with the work that we do. I'm going to give you some examples here in a second. These are some examples of conditions that we have treated here at this office and seen changes in their behaviors or outcomes for the better. All right, for the better. At our office, we want to identify several stations wherever and whenever they happen to provide a program of care for persons and to educate our community on how to live a healthier life so that we or you suffer safe less. We want you to be able to live a vital existence. And so some of these changes that we make or recommendations that we make is to achieve that. Having a class like this where I get to share this type of information with you is also very important because it gives me that opportunity. So the final key is, the, is taking responsibility. So the key to success in getting and staying well is for you to take responsibility for your health and well-being. You have to take responsibility. It is not my you know, it's not for me to look out for your health. You have to look out for your own health. It's not for me to tell you that I'm going to take care of your health and you do nothing. No. Your health is your responsibility. You get the task to take care of your own health and to make wise choices for what you do in life. What you put into your bodies determines what you will get out of your body in the long run. So bear that in mind, please. What you put into your bodies will determine what you get out of it in the long run. So make wise choices. If you are new to our channel, I welcome you to just browse through before you leave. If you've not yet subscribed and click the notification icon, please subscribe now and view on our page, uh, in our channel rather, we have many different um, patient testimonials. The one with Joy is one of my favorite ones, but there are many others. Um, I haven't put any new ones up there recently. It's, it's, it, it, it is unfortunate because when I put new ones up there, we get an influx of patients um, because people just gravitate toward these testimonials. Um, but, but there are some that are so powerful that if I put it on there, we won't be able to house the patients that will come in. There are a lot of people um, that are waiting for months just to be seen. So I don't want to make it too much more challenging, but it is what it is, right? So please view that. Now, having stayed through the class, 
we have a very special offer for everyone here tonight. If this is your first time um, listening to the, the presentation, and I'm going to put our post um, as well an email address for you to send information to, right? So, if you are interested in taking advantage of this offer, then all you have to do is indicate such in the chat section on your right hand side of the screen or wherever on the screen it is for you, right? Indicate so in the chat that you would like to receive your 40% discount for watching the lecture. This only applies to new patients. It does not apply to existing patients. So if you've already come in for treatment or come in for your exam, this does not apply to you. Something else applies and that will come next, but this part does not apply to you. So please, 40% discount is a big discount and I want you to make the most out of it. For those who make, for our existing patients now, if you are already a patient on our, on our books, if you refer somebody to our office, for every patient that you refer, you will receive a 20% discount of one treatment per person that you refer. So if you refer two people, you will get 20% off this first person and 20% off this second person. You don't get 20% off everybody. Right? It's 20% of one treatment per person that is referred. You also get a referral discount of 20%. Well, that, that is a referral discount. I, I misspoke because you get 20% off your update examination for anyone who have paid attention to this class. If so if you've been a part of this lecture, you will get a 20% discount automatically just for being a part of it. And the only way that you will know that you are a part of it is if your name appears in the chat. So your name has to appear in the chat. So 20% discount off your update exam, 20% discount off one treatment per person that you refer, and you will also get a 10% discount off the entire next phase of care, which is very important. So I hope that indeed you will take that up because it's, it's really quite beneficial. Just to give you a couple of pieces of information here. If it is that you don't yet know our web address is gcnjamaica.com. That's the first one right up at the top, gcnjamaica.com. Facebook.com forward slash gcnjamaica. Very important, facebook.com forward slash gcnjamaica. This is where we will post um, different videos, nutritional tidbits, and so on that will help you. We're also on YouTube at Gardner Chiropractic. Just type in Gardner Chiropractic on YouTube, G-A-R-D-N-E-R, -E Gardner Chiropractic. Or on Instagram and Twitter, I think it's also Gardner Chiropractic at Instagram and Twitter. So you can tweet us or follow us on Instagram. Also, on our Back to Health page on Facebook, we have a talk show called Back to, Back to Health Talk Show, which is our signature talk show where we discuss healthy topics on RGR 94FM here in Jamaica that we post and stream live in Facebook. So go to Back to Health Talk Show, um, 
you can see many videos on many different health topics that we have done in the past and you are welcome to participate in any future presentations that we have we do these classes every tuesday evening at 8 p.m jamaica time that's every tuesday evening at 8 p.m jamaica time i think right now we're on central daylight time i think so we're on central time right now so this is important all right so just to kind of top it off health is not a is not a one factor thing not a monofactorial thing it's multifactorial so you have to come at health from many different areas many different avenues many different angles if you do that, you have the best chance of optimizing your health, optimizing your wellness. A great place to start is by what you put into your bodies. Make sure you get everything in your body that you need to get, and nothing that you're supposed to, you're not supposed to get should go into your body. Any toxins you need to avoid, and any nutrients you need to make sure you get it. Because if you lack a nutrient or you have too much of any toxin, your health is going to comp be compromised. All right, so that is the key point to that. Now, I, I apologize that we went late, but I wanted to make sure that we gave enough opportunity for most people to get home. Um, I didn't want to put it on there too late, but thank you so much for participating. Here's what I'm going to say. If you have any questions, right, I'm going to stay on for about five, five minutes or so to answer any questions for anyone before I dismiss and shut off for tonight so if you have a question that you'd like to ask um please make sure you ask it as far as that email address is concerned the email address is appointments at gcnjamaica.com appointments at gcnjamaica.com That is important, right? So that way you can send your information to say you are interested in taking up the offer that we made so we know that you are indeed interested, right? So we can reach out to you and try to get it set up. So thank you so much for your time well spent. I enjoyed it myself and I hope that you did as well. I hope you learned something and I hope you join us again um, we are changing from doing these classes um, twice a month to doing it once a month for a bigger audience and try to ensure that um, we focus on getting as many persons to tune in as possible each month. Today is the first Thursday in July. I think we are down to do this again July 15th. Um, I think I'll do the third Thursday in the month. The first Thursday, oftentimes, we'll have little holidays in Jamaica that may interfere. One of those holidays that will interfere is our Independence Day slash Emancipation Day, which oftentimes will fall on or close to that day, so it ends up um, creating a problem for us being able to stream on that day. So I would suggest the third Thursday of every month you join us right here, and we'll be able to um, share another patient health workshop with you. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I promised, I will stay online for a little bit just to ensure that you are able to ask any questions of me, and I'll try my best to answer. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Take care.